Hey guys, in this video I'm going to review Boulder's Gate Enhanced Edition. This was a game uh, originally released in the 90s on the PC by Bioware and it uh, it was a very it implemented the Dungeons and Dragons rules very very uh, very well so it was a very true to a D&D style game um, you would roll a character and then you would go through and you would play and it was a lot of it was a lot of fun back in the 90s when I, when I used to play it on my PC and now I have it available on the iPad and iPad mini I'm not sure if it's available on the PC but uh, let's go ahead and uh, give it a shot we'll skip uh, this video here so this is Boulder's Gate. I'm just going to go ahead and load an existing game because creating a new game, uh, well, you know what, we'll go ahead and we'll create a new game so I can show you guys all the character customization options. So here you have a bunch of preset um, characters that you can uh, use. Move my there's a fighter, there's a thief, there's a mage. But down here at the bottom, you have the option to create a character. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to create a custom character. So we start out by creating a gender, or selecting a gender. We'll pick gender. I'm going to be a male. Hit done. You can pick a character portrait. There's not very many portraits available. I mean, I think there's like right around a dozen or so. Um, but uh, you, the import button down here is disabled. It was a, it worked in the PC version back in the 90s when I played it. You used to be able to import in custom artwork and use it as a portrait. Um, can't do it in this one. I imagine, uh, I think I read someplace that that's coming uh, in an update. We'll select a race. I like to be a human, but uh, also half elves are also usually really good. I'm going to create a, a, a magical character here. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to create it. I'm going to create a, a, a human, and I'm going to be a warrior. So I'm going to go back. And I'm gonna pick a different, um, a different uh, portrait, one that's more fitting of a warrior, right there. Pick a knight. I'm gonna pick a human, uh, uh, human uh, race, and now class. So here's all the different classes you can choose from. Um, one of the cool things so you have a fighter, a ranger, a paladin, a cleric, so on. Um, you can touch each one of them. Like I can touch the ranger. Uh, yeah, touch the ranger, and it gives me different class kits. Here's a here's a ranger. Um, may wear helmets, may wear any armor, and use any weapons. May not exceed specialization two slots of any weapon class. I can pick an archer. He's got different advantages, different disadvantages, and you can, you know, um, beast master, stalker, and we can go back. We can pick paladin, and they have their own different class kits as well as you know bards, sorcerers. I guess a sorcerer doesn't. Neither does a monk, but a bard does. Now, if I was to go back and pick a different race, such as the half elf, and pick a class, there's the option of a multi class becomes available. Some races support multi classes, some races do not. This one, if I select multi class, I can be a fighter thief, a fighter cleric, a fighter mage, a mage thief, so on and so on down here. Fighter mage thief, fighter mage cleric. So let's go ahead and look at this, the, the Fighter Mage Cleric. This character can use the abilities of a Fighter, Mage, and Cleric, though they cannot cast Mage spells while wearing armor and are restricted to weapons allowed by the Cleric Ethos. This character may specialize in but not master any weapon they can use. We're going to go ahead and pick that. That seems pretty cool. Alignment, you choose your alignment, whether you're lawfully good, all the way down to Chaotic Evil. I'm going to just be uh, lof uh, naturally good. Abilities. Here you can pick your um, your abilities. You can choose to re-roll them, or you can customize them yourself. Like if I don't want dexterity, but I want more strength or what have you, it's fine for now. We'll select skills, and here we have four proficiency slots available. Um, so now proficiencies are what your character is very good at. He, he excels at these items. So we can scroll through this. Um, this multi-class character can't use all this stuff so we're going to look at it said that um, majority of our stuff was going to be 
restricted to a paladin's uh, or a cleric's weapons. So we'll just pick, we'll put most of our stuff into a mace and um, can't use any bows. Maybe a sword or a shield. Let's put two in that. Okay, and now here's your character, uh, uh, your skill selection. Here it says Mage Book, level one. We have two skills that we can choose, so you can click through or touch through any of these skills here. See what they say. If I don't want that, I can touch it again and it turns it off. Um, I I like this one here, this Burning Hands. So I'm gonna leave that one. And then up here, there's armor. It says it lasts for nine hours. By means of this spell, the wizard creates a magical field of force that serves as if it were scale mail armor. So we'll leave that one. We'll do that one. Hit done. Memorize mage spells. We can, we can pick one of these two spells to memorize. I'm going to memorize the burning hands for now. Memorize priest spells. Okay, what kind of priest spell do we want? We would like a bless, right? Or a heal. Well, here's heal right here. Oh, wow. We get, we get three of these. So I'm going to take the healing. Blessing is cast the raises the morale of friendly creatures. No, not to worry about that. We'll definitely take armor. And okay, we'll use this one. Okay, so we're done. So that takes care of all of our skills. As you can see, that's just that is just for the particular class that I chose. They, they go through this whole process for different classes. Thieves have their own. Rangers have their own. It's very, very customizable, very deep in depth. You got a lot of stuff you can choose and do from here. So I always like to kind of pick my stuff to match with my portrait shows. So there we go. Hair is kind of brown. All right. So done. You can choose from different voices and play them with the way that I have my recording set up today. Um, to capture the screen only and not the not use a camera to try and capture it and stuff my audio isn't coming through so but uh, it's not too big of an issue for this particular video but I do uh, I will try and get something worked out where I can get audio and let's actually pick a better name let's pick uh, uh, Starts to do that box all of you. I know it's not the proper way to spell it, but this is uh, fantasy, right? You spell it how you want. So it goes through and uh, plays a little story here. We'll hit done. Let's just skip past it so we can get on with it. So here we are in the actual game. You can touch the play area where the character is at and move your finger around the pan. Um, if you touch. If you touch the ground, as I just did there, the player, the character will move to it. And that's how you move around. You do have a fog of war, so as you move, the fog of war lifts. So let's go ahead and, and take a look at some of this stuff. Up here in the very top left, we have the skull icon. If we touch it, it does absolutely nothing, and I will show you why. When the next one down is the north, uh, is a compass. We can touch that, and it opens up our map. And here we can see an entire map of this one location out of many. We can touch the skull icon on the top right, and it will show us the entire world map. So. It's a little skull to go back. And now if you hit the skull in the top left corner that did nothing earlier it returns us to the game so next we're going to look at our journal the journal is the third button down touch that one and here's your journal and it shows you um, what quest you have available what quest you're currently doing what quest you've completed and then you have the user option down here where you can add custom notes yourself you hit the add button and then you can type in a note and you can go back and refer to them later if you want to uh, you also have your inventory, your 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 character bags here. My character shows me his uh, armor class and his hit points and all that information off to the right there, and how much gold I have. I have 110 gold. And then my my character record is the next icon down. 
it shows me all the information about my character all of my stats you can scroll through all of your stats information your proficiencies your skills all that stuff in case you forget what you what weapons you said is uh, you're to be proficient in you can go back and you can look at all this information here under the information button it gives you all your stats of actual play time you have a uh, um, it also has a biography right here if you want to click on biography it has a, de uh, a little biography about the character however it does give you the option if you come over here to customize to edit the biography yourself you can create your own character customization build your own character biography and all that stuff so I'm gonna hit uh, uh, it looks like it might have crashed on me. Now I've been playing this game. F I think I've got uh, I don't know five hours or so into it on my on my game, and it definitely looks like it's frozen up on me. Um, let's go ahead and close this. And this works fine because now that I've showed you guys. Um, In that air server, you can ignore that. That just happens to be what I'm using to capture my iPad display. All right. So, um, like I said, I've got about five hours into it on the single player game on my ver on my single player game, and th that's the first time that I've had any kind of an issue with it at all. So it kind of surprises me. But we're gonna go ahead and load a game, and I'm going to load my my game here. Two days, five hours, so let's load that one. Alright. So I got this guy walking over to us. Uh, I think he just wanted to get around us, yeah. So now you can see I actually have a party. One of my party members is dead, but I do have three other party members here. Um, but let's go back over here. I can go into the character record again. This happens to be my character. But when you're in any of these in any of these buttons, such as the journal, the, the inventory, you can click on your characters on the right, and it cycles through them. Same with your your records. You can cycle through all the characters' records. These are party members that I picked up during my gameplay. I can hit kit description, and it gives me all the information about my characters. My uh, my characters' kits. Remember that when I selected like a paladin. There was different kits that became available. The same with when I picked a uh, a thief, there was different kits that were available to choose. This will show me what kit I selected and what their uh, features are, so I can always remember that. Reform party lets you remove party members if you don't want to play with any of these um, characters anymore. We have our mage spells. I have my primary character is a warrior, so these don't pertain to me. But I can select uh, my mage is actually dead, so I can't show you that. Same with my priest, uh, no, my Akiyuki can use a priest. I actually believe he's a priest. So, But here it shows you um, I don't have anything memorized or learned. But this is where your priest skills would go as well. And then we have settings. So you can go into gameplay here and you can adjust difficulties. All that kind of stuff. So with that, um, we will select our entire party. And start walking or let's go ahead and walk into the town here and I'll see if I can find you uh, we can walk up to this doorway here I believe let's see if I can go inside yep we're gonna go inside and we'll talk to this guy and here the dialogue opens up he just talks tells you what's going on you can hit end dialogue you can make this dialogue smaller too by shrinking it to give you more screen space or making it very very large on a small iPad screen I prefer to have the small screen space or the small dialogue and then because it opens up automatically whenever you want to or whenever you interact with people so I don't really see the point of having it except in battles because when you are in battle it does give you information well let's keep going through here I need to go to an, this inn which I believe is probably uh, must be down here So I've had a lot of people ask me about this on um, Twitter, as well as on my YouTube channel. How the game played, how the game worked, if it was worth the money. I think it's worth the money, but if you like these kind of games. And now see, here's a good example. Here's a uh, an NPC initiated dialogue with me. 
And now it gives you the multiple choice. Hi friend, I've not seen you here before today. What brings you to the Friendly Arm Inn? Or just the Friendly Arm. It's the city that I'm in. And then you can choose one, two, or three. Nothing much. Really just one. I'm here to meet friends, which is what I'm actually here for. So I'm going to select two. And, uh, but first, should I be sure? To, is your name Makiyuki? Why, yes, it is. And now watch. He's probably going to... He's probably going to try and kill me because... Yep, see, now I get to show you guys some battles. So I'm going to pop this open. I have it set up, and you can change the settings. If I go over here in the settings, um under gameplay you can select auto pause and then here the game will automatically pause when the certain events happen like when my character is hit I can turn it on and the game will automatically pause but I don't have that on so I have mine set up and my character is attacked the game is automatically paused so I'll go back to the game here the game is paused it tells you down there in the dialogue paused so I can select my first character use a skill hit select my sword and tell him to attack you touch the bad guy select my next character take her bow and arrow tell her to attack and pick this guy and pick his sword and tell him to attack now you can also select down here in the bottom right the little party button right here and it will select all of your people you can touch the sword and you can touch the bad guy and it will direct them all to attack and when you're ready to attack and everything is set up, you just hit the little unpause button down here in the very lower left. And now they go. There goes the battle. And there we go. The game is again paused, but that is because the bad guy has been killed. It says down there, Imowen, who is the female character in my party, says target is gone. So I can unpause it, it'll automatically pause again because the next guy has his target missing. But there we go. I'll move all of my players down here and then I will take my main character up here again. And see if I can't pick any loot. There's nothing for me to pick up. So, so there you guys got to see how it works with the party, how to do dialogue, how, to, how the battle system works. Um, one last thing is when you're going to be moving equipment around you can touch the equipment and place it wherever you want but the game also used the right click on the mouse quite a bit and there is no way to replicate a right click on the touch screen so what they did was you touch it and let go just tap it and you can, it's like picking up and moving right you can move your inventory around wherever but if you touch it and you hold it for about a second and a half and then let go it simulates a right click and it provides you with information about um, about the uh, the weapons and whatnot stuff like that that does get a lot of people caught out and they get frustrated because they can't figure out how to get the information or whatnot you just touch and hold it for about a second let go and it simulates a right click so that's boulders gate um, I hope you guys enjoyed it if you liked it and it was helpful for you, hit the like button. It helps me out. And I will catch you guys at the next video. Take care.